Hello, this video is going to be about drawing tips for beginners and hopefully fast tracks you guys into drawing like a five year old to drawing maybe more like a 15 year old. Um, so when I was younger I had a lot of drawing books and colouring in books that I learnt from and they were all about like basic shapes like the, the torus, um, like uh, drawing some cylinder shapes spheres and uh, just basic things like a, a pyramid and uh, cubes and I never really understood the purpose of these basic shapes to start with uh, even though it did take me step by step through using these shapes to build up something like an animal uh, using spheres and cylinders and things it still didn't really register until kind of later when I was looking at how uh, they made cartoon characters using simple shapes um, namely like Mickey Mouse with the basic you know the ears and the nose and things and they're all ellipses circles and and things like that uh, so you start to see that these are built up basic things so that they are easy to read on the eye um, and what happens is uh, when you're let, when you're starting to draw something, you might have nothing in your head, and the first thing you draw is a kind of stick man, and uh, you forget about the proportions, and you don't really think about where things go. And then when you start to make this into a character, it might feel a bit a bit bad, uh, trying to fit in all the bits that you want, and things get a bit confusing. So. I'm going to take you through step by step I'm going to make a kind of low opacity brush as if to simulate um, drawing very lightly let's just switch to the pencil here so that um, the mechanical one looks good so that it looks like a light pencil not too light that you don't see the video right okay so let's see um, when I was around about five, I remember drawing cars and I never really stylized them or anything. All the angles were very square, right? And I would draw a car, something like this. And that's pretty much the car that we all draw. And we don't really think about if this is going to run very well or if it's aerodynamic or anything like that. But we wouldn't think about that many things. And yeah, these days, one, cars are more aerodynamic than they used to be when I was younger. And two, uh, these kind of cars don't really exist, right? Plus we want to make it look 3D. So imagine we took this basic drawing and we made a little bit of a depth to it, right? So if we're looking at it top down, it's kind of, that's the width of it, right? We're looking at it top down, but roughly the same angle. So there's the wheels. So we're still, we've kind of rotated it, uh, you know, to look down at the top. And then there's the the window there. And the window is perfectly flat, so we don't have any slant on it, right? And that would be, uh, that would be where the lights are. And that would be the top down version of our car, right? Roughly, give or take. Okay, so now we want to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm going to take the top-down version to start with this time. Instead of starting with the, the side view, let's start with the plan view. And let's think, okay, well, the window is going to have a bit of a slant, so we're going to see more of it from the top. And let's do the kind of little window wipers there or something. Right, and let's also make a bit of a curve profile. Forget about the box, right? The box is just there as a guide. Do a curve profile there and let's make it go a little bit further out and then back in right and then let's make it go straight and then bubble out again for the back wheel and kind of like a bow tie or a dog bone sort of shape and then the back window is going to be a little smaller and i'm going to kind of taper it like that right so that is going to be that and i'm going to put the lights further up here so now let's convert that to the side view so there's the front there's the back this is going to be 
the the base of the bo the body and the base for the wheel is somewhere here okay and so we've got this curve so these this bit here is where the curve kind of starts and it goes round 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 and makes its way around to the front right but it's still all pretty much flash side on we can even give it a bit of a profile there's where the lights are right so i'll do something like that with the lights and now i go up to where the window is so the base of the window is here and the top of the window is here now i have that angle the same kind of upward angle like that because we're looking top down we've seen the slant there and then that now marries up with that point there's the roof there's the um, at the back and we can make it all nice and rounded there's the bit where it bubbles out so we might have that be the wheel arch and same for here that's going to be the wheel arch there right and that is now going to be a slightly better looking car than we had before now the best thing to do is look at cars and study them to work out the proportions and the size of the wheels and things like that because these these proportions and sizes are probably wrong um another thing that's often forgot is the the mirrors and they'll help to set it apart okay and maybe there's a bit of roundedness to this top part as well right, but that's all very you know like uniform the distance here is the same as the distance there it's the same as this little car and it doesn't really do much maybe the, the the front's a bit longer but let's exaggerate and take that one step further so we'll go back to the side profile again and let's just give us a bit of room so we're going to have our box shape to fit the car in and let's just say we really push the the seating area the the, the compartment would you call it uh, the driving compartment away over to the back and bring the front way out here somewhere all right and then we're going to say well, there's a wheel here and wheel way over here all right it turns into a longer funky looking car we're going to see the lights a bit here and then a bit of the main screen the windscreen and something like that just remember to keep it all uniform right i'm making a little modification to that shape up there calling that my new shape and i'll do a little airfoil there and then round that part and what often happens is this back bit here is higher than where it starts there and all you have to do is look at any sort of car reference and you'll see that happen quite a lot it's recommended just to flick through any sort of car re car review book and kind of look at those things all right so it's a little bit more interesting but we can go one step further we can actually start to put some lines be like between the the corners any sort of corner change just project it up like that right and if we copy the same line from the profile, from the windscreen or windshield, and now we don't really see the back of the window, but we've now got something like that. And it feels like I'm looking top down at it a bit because you can see quite a lot of the roof here, which tells me it's more like a kind of tilted box like that right and that's me just tracing the same lines with the box there right so you can see where that's kind of going is all of this is tied into the the cube um and that's the way to think about it so an exercise is to basically draw the cube first right and then put the profile on the side or the middle but it's easier to do the sides so let's just do a simple shape like that then you see these angle these angles here of the cube. That's the angle you go at, and then that arc there is what you want there. 
until you get to the, roughly the same angle and then you can cut that in there project it down with the same angle of these and you get to that point put a little arc in there and then a little arc there I'm going to stop a bit early at the back it's usually a little higher so it's got some room for the exhaust pipes and things um, and then you're going to project that same line there that's the inside of that wheel hub even though it's going to be covered by a wheel we see a little bit of it right and then because the wheel's there it's going to stop and even the wheel's got a bit of thickness that follows the same rule this wheel here has got a bit of thickness going that same direction it's kind of like an isometric view and it's a kind of futuristic car with the windscreen following through to the to the bonnet or whatever you might call it the trunk not the trunk but the uh, the hood the hood of the car that's the american term right british term is bonnet and american term is the hood the trunk is the the boot or the back right and i can put a little bit for lights there I'll just darken everything else and we're kind of getting somewhere with it right it does look like a bit of an old capri car or something right and then down so we've got three basic angles there we've got up left and right and this diagonal that is basically isometric but that is already much better than this Right, and we're getting a step closer to shading this as well so I'll basically hide all this you can pause the video if you wanted to copy any of this or you know get your head around it let's just do a similar thing with a character so we start with a cube I'll just do isometric again I'm going to change the diagonal angles very much I'm tempted to because of the way I'm used to thinking right so every aspect of the body every every um basic part like the head the torso the hips even and legs and the feet they're all going to follow the same cube system right let's just do some little dashes as if we see through this like imagine someone's inside a glass cube does not have to be perfect it's a it's a guide box right let's just call it a guide box this is the angle that someone's standing at so what i like to do is draw the the feet the way they're kind of pointing right so there's uh, the right foot and let's just do the left foot kind of at an angle like that. so imagine this is the base of their shoes imagine they stood in snow and that was the the imprint that they left that is the base of their feet as if we can see through it now we can sort of build up some height top of that so we just go up right up from that little cylinder there for where the foot would slide in up from the center here a little cylinder like that and then cast these down okay and then even go that way to that point or to that point and it gives us an idea of these as being a kind of glassy looking shoes right imagine everything's made of glass the sake of this so the same with the head so the head is also going to be the same kind of angles and it's not going to be a cubic robot head but this gives us a guide so let's just put there's the eyes there's what the nose would be and there's the mouth right but we want to make this look 3d so we come out of it and back in so we're basically deviating to the left to come out and going to the right to come back in so there's a as your eyebrow ridge which comes out a bit as well all right I'll put the little eyes there actually let's just call that the eyebrows just to cover those up cheekbone coming out and chin coming out and we mostly see the head because of the angle we're looking down at this at and see the top of the ear right and then something like that the neck is kind of tucked under there somewhere and then we see a bit of that and then the mouth would be 
something like that okay so that's still a lot more better than if you drew just a face like or what often happens is someone will do the eyes way up here and you know something like that and it looks kind of strange because you don't see the other eye kind of looks like cyclops um but really it's better to show a little bit of a a turn slightly three quarter turn because it's more interesting and what you would get is a little bit of the eye on the other side as well as the eye on this side and then the nose coming in a little meniscus or uh what do they call it the fill trim the little thing but under your nose where it gets to the lips and what i like to do is make the top lip uh, dark and then a little shadow under it and that seems to work quite well and then with the eyes just leave a little bit at the top right where the light is and then the eyebrows and i like to shade in just a little bit underneath so between the eyebrow and the top of the eye just to put that in shadow same with the, the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin right, and then it connects up to the jaw and you don't have to draw every line you can get away with drawing the shadowy parts right so let's try go somewhere between these two drawings to give you a better understanding so there's your basic you've committed yourself to this circle to start with you've not done it lightly the way I've done it here that means I can easily make modifications and changes right but when you've drawn full weight you don't have any place to go you can't really go anywhere except to erase it and that's already kind of wasted but let's just carry on with that let's just move this nose to here let's put the big old eye here and let's do the eye here but make it kind of smaller and also squash it right we'll also squash it a bit and this one will keep a bit more rounded because it's kind of looking more at us it's more in our general direction and then something like that and then the ear here so as it makes its way around the head let's just do a side profile there's the ear perfectly side on the nose perfectly side on and as we go round to the other side of the head it's becoming more like that and then it's a bit more of a squashed ellipse and the same with the nose it's it's becoming round and it's been getting more straight on and that looks like something completely different but let's just draw that a bit better here so uh, so there's the ear the nose right the eyes and then we turn that round let's say it's facing you so there's the nose the eyes and the ears are more up and down the way like that so it's kind of like a, a big coin rotating round uh, let's also put the smile in like that and let's go halfway so halfway there's da, 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 and they've got an arc here so it's an arc that's kind of not quite as much of an arc as that but not as straight as this either so somewhere in between and the nose is not all the way out like that distance now because this one doesn't have very much so it's somewhere in between all right and the mouth is going to be just below that part we'll just do a little top lip and a little shadow for the bottom lip and some little dimples at the side and then the eyes like that and the ear is going to start to become more of a, an elliptical shape something like that remember this is for beginners so you can gradually refine this knowledge as you get more familiar with it okay so then there's the sort of little brow there and the head and it usually has a bigger part up here and then the chin like so and a bit of a cheekbone 
and you can see <laughs> I've made the chin so much follow down so I can just do that and now it's a kind of chubby guy with a big extra double chin put the eyebrows in and then I'm going to shade there and there shade a little bit under the nose this watch it doesn't look too much like a moustache right, let me put some lines there okay it's not perfect but it's definitely in the right direction so let's just draw this again with that all in mind that the nose is going to be there not quite as pointy out here like that but it's more becoming like this until it's a straight line when it's face on uh, the eye here this one a little shorter the smile like that we don't see the other ear because they like, like here we only see this ear on this side the only way we see both ears is when it's facing you so we just see this one and it's a bit more elliptical it's a bit squashed because of the angle and that's the three quarter view just like this one right so going back to that the shoulders are also going to be up here the torso all these angles are all doing the same thing the ones if they go left to right they're a diagonal all right apart from these ones so we've got that that and that this is three angles we're looking at this at and then the legs well, i'll just do that and that for these right keep it simple for you there's the socket where this arm's going to go. The other one's behind here, right? We don't actually see it because if we make this cube sort of connected up, we see that's the other face that's similar to this one. And you're probably thinking, well, how would I draw this arm and not keep it flat? Well, just imagine that it's, again, a cube. And bring that out like that. And then, then we're going to make it really static, like a robot or a soldier to start with to help you understand it. And then another cube for the hand and you might see a bit of that same thing happen back there right and that's you got your working area so you see the top of this box therefore you see a bit of the shoulder uh, you see a bit of the, the chest the legs knees and so on all right i'm drawing very baby like to give you guys an idea of how this is all working out right see the front of the hand and you see a bit of the pinky there and the side right i'm just drawing the way you guys might be drawn at this point so if there's anyone to mock you can mock me <laughs> this guy can't draw that's true but near can you guys I suppose yet yeah. um, so that's how you should be drawing at this point so don't be drawing flat all the time like here's my character face and uh, shaking hands I'm going to shake hands with this guy and tum to tum there's my briefcase uh, I've got a hat on oh I better give it a tie and shirt and things uh, and big boots it's all very rushed and straight lines everywhere and there's no real construction going on um, that might look kind of all right for me because um, I'm kind of used to proportions but sometimes I see people draw they draw so small and things are bigger than they should be and some things are smaller and the proportions are all all over the place and they might have one thing doing one thing and another doing another thing and just be not really thought about <laughs> yeah best art ever um so if you're if you're new to drawing the first thing you should really practice is training yourself to draw very lightly right as opposed to drawing this rigid box like form that's full commitment whatever I've drawn is now done I suck I no longer care about this drone right what you should be doing is saying my drone's not quite there yet so I'm going to be nice and quiet 
until it's there. So learn to draw lightly. Practice drawing a circle over and over again, over itself in a bit of paper, as light as possible until you start to see it come through. And even start to sort of go smaller with the circle, but keep the same pressure. You notice if I go smaller and smaller, I'm kind of getting this shaded sphere. And I'm actually forcing it to go up to the top left a tiny bit. Right. Uh, and you can also do the same for an ellipse. It's a lot harder to get the pressure right with an ellipse because of the angle difference and then up and down and diagonals. Right. And spheres are kind of better because it gets you into the habit of drawing these curves very lightly, which you use a lot of. Not very many things are made of straight lines, maybe built up of straight lines, but you won't just have that sort of thing going on. So back to um, drawing like cars and vehicles and objects. Uh, if you want to practice uh, this drawing lightly thing, draw very lightly a cube like this, a cuboid rather. Right. And imagine this is going to be a box for some deodorant. Right, so this is a kind of branded uh, deodorant box. We'll put a little logo on the side and we call it, you know, D O D O R A N T. You notice how I've forced the text to be more compact because I know it won't fit in there if I if I had looked straight on at this box. It would be more like D O D O R A N T, or however you want to spell it. <laughs> um, because as it rotates, like this plane is rotating away from us, as this box rotates, this is all getting more and more co compressed, just like with the face, uh, when you look at the face side on, and then it starts to, you know, rotate away from you. So the eyes, in this case, are getting more compact, whereas in this case, the ears rotating around get more compacted. Um, is the nature of the ellipse when it's front on it's like that when it's side on it's like that and somewhere in between is like this and everything on it is also being sort of squashed okay so we can even do that and put it here right and then let's say the box is open so we just do some angles like that and maybe another one sticky bit and you can now see inside the box and there is a, a top of the, the canister in there. That's all we really see of it is the top. So let's now bring it out of the box. So first we need the box as the guide. Right, very roughly. And then we'll get a cylinder, uh, an ellipse for the top part, and it goes down to the bottom. And we don't really see the top part of the cylinder, so it's just really just drawing the bottom arc. But you can draw the whole thing as a guide, and then later you can emphasize that edge that you see. Right, the top of it's there. Now, a lot of what I see is this. Well, there's the lid. That breaks the perspective, that breaks this angle. The only way it's going to look like that is if you're looking at it directly side on, like this. There's my kind of you know, deodorant, a little label there. But because of this arc, that's that top edge, this one, right? This is also going to do the same thing, right? That's that one. And then there's the base, yeah. It's also going to be doing the same thing. So all three of these are being turned. So again, if it was a cylinder, imagine it's a coin on a table and you're looking at it directly side on, and then you suddenly look down at the top of it and you see the whole coin, right? So somewhere in between is that. So it's just getting used to that arc uh, being there. 
and you can put little wedge like that in and that would kind of go around with a little bevel right so you can put a little bit of a shading shadow in that part right and let's say we took the lid off it again i'm just gonna clear everything drop my cube cuboid and i also draw a cube for the lid being taken off draw my ellipse there same arc here for the bottom right so that's the lid being taken off now we've got the cylinder a bit further down we need a bit of room for the the spray part now modern modern deal drink cans the spray is actually part of the lid but in the olden days we had a bit of a bump up here a bit here and then that became like another little part like that little head with a little nose on it and you'd press this down right and that's all part of that so you notice how to get that bump i'm just kind of coming off that ellipse there and going up the way and back down so this is now the bit you see that's why i've drawn in these just to show that's the solid side and this arc kind of no longer matters just a quick way of doing that right and got a little bevel there I go round a bit even that sits inside it and so on right and then you have your the shading and I try and make the shading follow the curve as well it's kind of tricky but you can just kind of cross hatch this up and a little shadow right so that's the sort of product design side of it and it's a good way to uh, get into drawing things in 3d and things like that have you ever seen those uh, the car designs like car concepts and they look amazing and they're like whooshy whoosh and you get these like spectacular shading and uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah all that cool stuff going on right how how does one begin to draw a car that looks like that well you have to have that built-in cube in your mind where you know it sits inside this cube but it's also got a bit of perspective in there with these lines they don't just sit parallel anymore they actually converge and that's part of the perspective that you probably have heard about or studied right where the lines are all converging to one point even there as they go away they would converge i'm just going to do it like that for now so that's going to be where the car sits and you can start to imagine well how high up does it go is this the the roof here and it goes down and then meets the back of the car right now there's the wing mirror there and then does that look right nope is it more like that and i'm trying too hard to somehow connect it to this box remember the box is just a guide it's not part of the drawing it's just a guide that's there to give me these angles so how much of close to that angle should i be right and then if i'm not sure i'm just going down the way and then follow that round go all the way to the back there and then I'll put in these ellipses, right? So if you, again, if you try to draw a circle there, you're breaking the perspective. It's got to be distorted by the face that it's facing along. So this wheel is pointing that way, and so is this cube's face, right? So, and it's been distorted because it no longer looks like a rectangle. It's now something like, like that. So it's really been, if I put a circle in there, it's really been kind of compressed and distorted so I'll put that in there and that in there and yeah you can start to see some form taking place 
right? and then you put on in all your nice shading your airbrush shading so before the days of digital art it would have all been done with little airbrushes and stencils and things to make this look really cool but now with um, tools like Photoshop and 3D Max and Maya and all these other cool tools for making 3D you get a lot of this perspective done for you and you can even social, show some weird angles like this and that is what we're going to cover in a second these angles that show the contour like so if that was just straight like that it's a bit boring but let's just say we did cross there then it went up and down do that up and then down and we're pretty much tracing a kind of bump in the bonnet there like maybe an extra extra big engine and it just needs a bit more space and we can also put a little kind of coolant part in there some sort of mini hot rod Right, so we're building up uh, everything based on the cube, but the cube isn't important. Uh, I've also seen some issues where, with when people they use the cube to draw something, they'll think that everything needs to be as flat as the cube. So they'll be like, okay, well, there's there's that, and then there's the car. And, and that's kind of it, right? But it all feels a bit squashed. In fact, this is even more than that. It was a case of give them a plane to draw on and they tried to draw a car and everything was just so flat to it. It's a bit like drawing like that and like, yeah, I'm done. I've done the, I've done the task. Yeah, I'll win. But I think it's better if you take a bit more time and put your workings in and put the cube in, do some perspective, really make this get bigger towards you and it gives you this nice distorted view which then you can fit your car in where I see more of the front of it here, then up for the windscreen out with the wing mirrors barely even see the wheels to see that and in the back yeah barely even see that the side of the car to the back We've got a nice convertible here a little uh, rear view mirror when with the windscreen wipers Right, and then everything's just roughly based off that cube. That cube gives me an idea of the angle and anything at all, as long as you understand why these sides are converging and things like that, you can spend all day just drawing these cubes and getting a feel for the kind of angle that it's making. It could be a building or anything. Let's try it this way. Yeah. So thinking of these as buildings now, that feels like I'm kind of looking down at this one because of the angle here. This one feels I'm a little bit more on the ground a bit, and especially this one. This one definitely I'm on the ground because of this line here and then this one yeah I'm kind of on, in line with the roof because of this angle right and this is the eye level line the horizon so everything is tying in with that now let's go back to the character stuff and let's try a little bit of that perspective right so we've got the converging lines really push these as far as, as far as I can all right something like that and now I put the feet in here and start to imagine where everything is gonna be 
legs and there's a bit more of these contour lines coming in. These are quite handy because they give me a sense of the profile. Right, we don't really see that one as much, but I could put the head in here and I put the eyes there, the nose and the mouth, right? You see a good bit of the head shape like that. And that's already a good step better than me drawing it in a boring sort of stance that's just this. That's my guy. Did nothing. This at least helped to introduce some other things. Holding a gun or something. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit more about these contour lines now. So imagine a fallen tree. So a fallen tree is basically a cylinder. You know, um, and you'd see inside, you know, where the little squirrels live and it's got the little bit coming off like that, right? And you see I've built this mainly of cylinders. So I'll do, this as the open side, which means the bottom's going to be kind of there. And this can all be kind of rough and things, right? But this arc here is the me following round the cylindrical shape. And it could be features of the tree, like parts of the trunk, or it could be the shadow, right? So there might be a bit more at the bottom. I'm also going to like have little bits go that way. And even in the inside, got that arc and round and some bits for the direction of the park. Right. And what I'll do is then shade all that in, in the inside. A bit more like this. Bailey wants to show up that. There we go. And I shade that in just a little bit. And shade the bottom in. And shade the bit of that. So that um, kind of contour type drawing can be good. You could basically do a whole drawing like that, just doing these spirals, right, for the foot, the other leg. Let's make this foot point at us, so I'll just bring it to the middle, right, and then maybe the belly it gets bigger smaller and we could have the pecs also be these spirals the arms start up here and the big muscle there and then the hand this guy is made of spring springy man and never left much room for the head but we'll just make him look very sad so his head's pointing down and there's his nose his eyes very sad he's sulking so side on he'd be looking down like that sad and all hunched right he's got a big belly like me just, mm. boom, boom, boom. Maybe he's got a sore stomach. Oh. We could have his right arm 
coming around, holding the stomach. Okay, so you can draw kind of like that as well, and you never let go of the page, and you get used to doing these circle shapes. So back to thinking and drawing a basic character. I'll try draw as basic as I can if I was again two years old or something, or maybe I drew when I was five. And I'd have something like this. Obviously, it's hard to break out of good habits now that I've learnt so much. But let's just say that was my character there. And I wanted to give him a tie. And I didn't really think about much else. Right, maybe some spiky hair. Right, and he's got a seriously long neck. Now nothing's really been thought about. But imagine that was my construction line. So let's just take a copy of that. And move it. And treat that like it was something that I could trace and then I can spend a bit of time fixing it so you can make mistakes but then you can go back over and say well I don't like the long neck so I'll move the head down a bit let's do a new layer okay so I'll move the head down a bit and I don't like the eyes I'm going to make them in little buttons like that and I'll make his smile much bigger I mean this is a bit of a silly improvement but it's still a second um, pass at this. So if this is my 10 second pass, 10 seconds, right? This is more like the 20 seconds, as if the first one would have taken twice as long. And I say, I don't like his shoulders, so I'm gonna make them a bit more like that. And I think it stops there, right? That's maybe what I might think. It's like, I'm gonna make a change to that bit now. And where's his buttons? Okay. And his top is going to be open. So I'm, I'm thinking twice about everything I've done and made an improvement. All right, let's give him a spiky hair. And I'll give him a pocket. All right, that looks cool. And then I'm going to give him flares. Flares are old tight trousers that flare out the bottom. And his feet didn't look very finished, so I'll I'll give him little shoes, and I'll do like a little shoe face on and one like that, and then his hands like this, because I've seen some people do hands like that, for example, and then I'd go again. I'm gonna copy that, move it over. It's just a race. That. And let's call this 30 seconds worth of time. And uh, let's just fade that out so I can draw over it. So a new layer. Now, if you don't have the ability to use layers and you only have pencil and paper, I recommend either getting some tracing paper or a very thin, cheap A4 paper that you can get from like pound shops or little essential shops. Now you can make more changes and you'll be like, okay, I'm going to puff up this jacket a bit here and make this all kind of foldy and a bit more foldy where it bends and I'll have this stop because I want this shirt to come in there and then I'll put some folds in here just to help that bit Doesn't have to be everywhere where the folds are, just where it folds. A little button for the shirt, which will help. And then the hands out. Bring them in like that. And take the thumb for the touch. And this one, I'll do something similar. But the hand is a bit more side on. Okay, and I'll just put that in shadow there. Now I'm going to make this a little bit longer. I'll do a little clip there. Open it up a bit. Let's 
spending much more time on it. Okay, I'll make the collar go up. And then I think it's more like this. Again, I'm not using reference either. And that would obviously help if you had some kind of photo reference, like a closed catalog is pretty good. Gives you an idea of how things are supposed to look. And the head isn't just a round thing. I'm going to make it a bit more like an oval. And I'll do the nose and smile. Eyes a bit there and some eyebrows. And I'll do the little shading that I was talking about earlier at the top. And now I'll put his ear in and give him some hair. Let's why not just give him a spike again. And it looks like he's gone for his interview. Let's do the back of the collar. So as you see, I'm spending a lot more time on it and it's making it look kind of nicer. Do some little folds here and here. Get a little zipper pocket. I don't really see it in the other side because it's kind of rotated itself round to the other angle. It's on the other side, so we don't have to see it. And then his feet are going to be much more like that. We see most of the shoe there has got some nice dressy shoes on. And even though yeah, he's, his trousers have been taken up a wee bit too high, we can always fix that by putting them a bit lower. Like that. Now we'll just erase out the rest of it. Now he's still pretty static. He's just standing there, he's not doing anything amazing, but that, if you can get to that level through all the little tips I've showed you in this video, um, that's still really good progress. Um, then you can evolve to posing your character, doing something completely different. And thinking about um, hips and directions and things like that. Yeah, and are the feet planted or pointing. There's lots of little tricks that you pick up just by trying things. You'll teach yourself uh, these very common ways of approaching things. And making your own little refinements as you go. gradually get better at this stuff. Uh, the more studies you do as well, life drawing or any sort of reference, keeping your lines nice and loose and thinking about muscles, uh, keeping the poses quite interesting too. Think about volume and mass and the bagginess of clothes and do the drape and the folds and things. Okay, like once you've got a, a rough sketch you can follow this process of refining it with more time, tracing over it, or going over it in, in a more committed darker pencil. If I bring this density right up, and you'll see kind of what I mean. So you can now then be like, okay, I'm happy with these these marks I'm making. It's more like an ink thing now. 
and you can even make other little changes. Yeah, so I guess that's going to be it for this video. Um, keep up the practice and make sure to take yourself to a better level than you were before. Don't rush something out because you know you can't draw. If you want to get better at drawing, just slow down a bit. And take a bit more time to think about proportions and construction. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube to help with that. I don't want to go into those kind of details, but I just want to get you from drawing uh, these committed straight lines to then thinking about these more uh, interesting lines to look at and then thinking about poses as you get better. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you find it useful. Feel free to like, subscribe and leave a comment and I'll try my best to keep them coming. Thanks for watching. Bye.